everyone and welcome back. So today's video I am finally putting to the test the Japanese makeup products that I bought in Japan during my last trip. All of these products are definitely first impressions. I have never used them before so I will be using them for the first time on camera. I actually am really really excited for this video because they are a lot of products that are popular in Japan or new and current in Japan and I've waited for a while to open these babies up as well. So if you are curious of my impressions on how I created this face with new products then please keep watching and let's get right into it. Yay! Alrighty, where to begin? This lighting is really not doing me any good today. I believe I have pretty much everything for a full look, but if I don't, I may have to substitute a couple of things. First would be primer. I have got the peach pink primer. This is by Brilliant Colors. Whoa, it's actually a bit more watery than I thought. I'm just gonna blend this out with my fingers, but this is like a give you more of a softer and brighter complexion, which obviously it is brightening quite a bit already. The texture is it's quite fluidy, but it does blend pretty easily. It's obviously not really like a pore feeling primer, but it still does help kind of blur the situation on my nose. <laughs> All right, primer done. I definitely think it helped brighten my complexion a ton and the texture is quite nice so cool moving on to the base the XL skin tint serum which I actually am like super excited to try this one out if I can get it out oh my god impossible Whew. almost there almost there <laughs> So they say this one's kind of like a serum like foundation. I'm going to apply it like I would apply my BB cream and then I'm going to blend it out slightly with a brush. Ooh, I feel like it's got a decent amount of coverage as of yet. It's definitely a slight pink tint. I did get it in the shade ST01, which is natural ochre. It is a natural, but like slightly brighter than an average skin tone. Honestly, it feels pretty similar to my favorite BB cream, which is the Maybelline one from Japan, but more dewy. So I will blend this in and see how it goes. So far, actually, I'm really liking like the texture of it and everything. It definitely has a decent amount of coverage for kind of the texture and what it is. Although not like full, it's not covering all my blemishes on my cheek and that. But for like an everyday wear, this is about the amount of coverage I would prefer. Next is concealer. Magic concealer from Calypso. I do have the shade in pink and beige. So this is supposed to work with like everything, dark eyes, blemishes and all of that. The packaging is like, I guess cute, but it does look kind of cheap. It is cheap though, so makes sense. Ooh, um, oh, just in a normal doe foot applicator. Oh, it feels like a little bit thick. It is kind of, I mean, not really dark, but darker than what I usually wear, I'd say. Just blend it out and see. It blends out super easy, for sure. Like, I feel like I barely even puffed it. Puffed it? Blended it? It's very, very natural looking. I do think it's like pretty much my skin tone. Usually with my concealers, I do go like slightly brighter than my skin tone. And this one's like right on it. Under the eyes, not bad. I might apply a little bit on my blemishes and see if it actually covers them up. Too many blemishes to cover, am I right? <laughs> I do think it's a little bit pink and a little bit dark on my skin, so I feel like it shows up, especially when I try to like cover blemishes. And it probably wouldn't be my concealer of choice to cover blemishes. Touch in Soul No Problem Packed SPF 30, which usually I would use a very, very light amount of a loose powder, like a translucent powder. Usually I would never use something like this, but this is all I got. It's not even Japanese, it is Korean. <laughs> But I bought it in Japan. Cute little packaging, I actually do really. It's very Korean packaging. <laughs> the color, there was only one shade. It does not look too bad. I am just gonna get a brush and sweep across it and hopefully it won't be too much. So I'm legit. Oh, that's probably too much. Yeah, this is not a under eye sort of powder. Mmm, yeah, it does cake up a little bit for use around the eyes. Hmm, I like it on my cheeks. It definitely helps like diminish pores on the cheeks, which I guess is the whole like no pore room. It's 
supposed to get rid of those pores. It definitely wouldn't be that kind of powder that I would use. I would use it to do more like touch-ups throughout the day. The puff is mm, probably not my favorite. It's like in between a sponge and like one of those fluffy puffs. Don't know if I'm a fan of it. I guess it'd be interesting to actually try this properly. Should I dive right in? Seems like a lot of product. Oh yeah, uh-huh. It's definitely Max like mattifying. You can look, look at my nose, look how matte it is. <laughs> it is definitely one of those ones. Really good for touch-ups and probably people who have slightly oilier skin. Next, I would usually do brows at this point. The Cezanne Eyebrow. It is just a brow pencil. I usually use a cream, so we'll see how good I am at controlling this one. It does have a spoolie, and then it's just like a wind-up mechanical, which it's kind of like an oval like shape. Hopefully that helps in like carving out a slightly sharper line. I think we all know that Japanese people do tend to go for the more like natural look, especially with brows, but I do have somewhat defined brows and like to keep them that way. The spoolie is good. I like the spoolie. It's very like compact. And as I mentioned in the haul, which if you haven't seen that already, like, please go check it out. It is the haul that I, like, showed all of these products, but it was just a haul. I hadn't actually tried them. As I mentioned in that video, Cezanne products are really cheap. I'm pretty sure this eyebrow pencil was, like, 600 yen. So it is definitely quite affordable. The color is pretty good. I went for, I think it was just, like, the dark brown. Deep brown. Deep brown is the color. Definitely easy to feel in, like most of the brow i just obviously would find it kind of difficult to draw a very defined sharp tail to my brow i don't look too bad does it not my finest work but the lid is like actually kind of soft like softer than it seems it seems quite hard but you can get the color out pretty easily now eyeshadow eyeshadow i actually do not have that much of i think i'm gonna go with like a brownie pinky theme today vabby mellow bling bling eye gem shadow in brown topaz 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 oh it's actually not too strong i might go directly in with my pinky and it's pressed pressed pigment so it's not like falling out or anything Ooh, it's very warm it's a warm brown for sure it is stronger than i expected <laughs> Very shimmery. I like the shimmer. I'm all about the shimmers these days. I'm gonna blend it up a little bit. Yeah, let's blend it up a little bit so it's not as intense. It is definitely really creamy. There we go. We got the brown color on the lid. I do like it. I do like the color. I just don't know if it's gonna suit anything else that I have here right now. I'm going to use a shade out of my Too Faced white chocolate bar. I'm gonna use the cake batter shade just to add a little bit of something something. I think we'll try a little bit of this can make jewelry shadow veil. So it's supposed to make whatever eyeshadow you have more like shimmery. I'm just gonna pop it on top. It is silver though, so I don't know if it'll work like quite well. There's like smaller pearls and then larger pearls apparently. Honestly, I can't really tell which is which. Okay, the right is larger pearls and left is smaller. I'm gonna go with the smaller and literally just take a little bit and put it right into the inner corner. Ooh, pretty. This is nice. I will definitely use this all the time. The smaller pearls are definitely like quite subtle. And again, can make is another super cheap one, so super affordable. Oh, it blends really well. I don't know if you guys can really see. It blends actually really well with that um, goldy brown business. Next, I am going to get one of the Etude House Play 101 pencils. Obviously, this is a Korean brand also. I'm going to do the number seven, which is the slightly more like beigey nude one. And I'm going to put it underneath. I always usually love these ones and yes, I do love the color. It's a really nice nude. Pop that underneath so we get our little nami da bukuro. I don't know what to call it. Tear bag. <laughs> I actually do want to darken up my eyes a little. Okay, I'm going to use one shade <laughs> out of the Gingerbread Spice Too Faced palette. The Gingerbread Latte because I want to just darken up my eyes very, very slightly. I want a bit more color. I was going to use the pink of the Uzu eyeliner, but since I've got this kind of orangey theme going, I am going to use the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Liner in Peach Brown. I do already love the Hyper Sharp Liner. They're really good liners, but this color is a first for me. Let's go. Doing a classic Tina wing. Hmm, it is quite watery. I mean, more so than I remember. I must say it's not like super opaque in color. And when you layer it, it does tend to like kind of, it's not even color 
all across it. Okay, I feel like they're even now. We're just gonna go with that. I went with the peach brown on top. Suzanne Natural Cheek in number four. It's kind of like, that was really loud. Golden, orangey, brown kind of movies. It says natural, so hopefully, maybe I'll dab it out a little bit on my wrist. Oh! That was more than I hoped for. Whoa, this comes on really strong. How is it like natural? It is super orangey. It's a nice shade, but like I, I for some reason didn't think it'll come out that strong, especially Suzanne from Japan. Suzanne, it's Suzanne actually, Se Suzanne. <laughs> actually blends out super nice and super easily. I'm going to use the Kate Lash Former Long Film Type Mascara. So this, was really popular in Japan while I was there. I can't bloody get it out. Almost there. I do like the packaging. It is very sleek, very simple. And I'm gonna do a light coat, probably not go too intense because I am gonna pop on some falsies. I do like this whole simmer, situ simmer situation. Shimmer situation. Hmm? Ooh, I like the brush. It's quite a thin one. You can see the fibers on it already. I think I probably will like this mascara a lot. I'm excited to try it like full on. Really helps pick up each lash. I think it'll be good for people who do have very thin lashes. And now we're going in on the bottom. I think it takes a couple of layers to get like decent volume. Oh, got it in my eyeball. Does anyone else just like very casually touch their eyeball because I am that person and a lot of people don't like it. I'm like not afraid to stick stuff in my eyes if you get what I mean. So I'm going in with a, a second layer of the mascara. That's pretty good for me. Helps separate, helps lengthen and then it also washes off with warm water. It's not, it's like waterproof but comes off easily which I freaking love. Pop on the lashes. Actually I might do lips first. The Daiso orange lip tint and then I'm going to try top it with the lip essence from I Choose. This is probably not exactly the lip color I would choose to go with this but this is all that I've got so I'm gonna put, put, put the orange on first. This is a very watery lip tint but it does color pretty well. And then I'm gonna top it with the I Choose lip It's not bad. Probably definitely like a little bit orange. I would like to go for something slightly more subtle. But the essence feels beautiful. It's very like nice and glossy but not sticky. <sniffs> Lastly, we're going to pop some lashes on. I think I'm going to go with the more intense one. The Diamond Lash 104. Hmm, they completely changed the packaging. I like it because they're just in these like small cases now. Whereas before you had to keep like the whole pack to like store them. So I like that they changed it, that you can just keep this. So I'll just soften it up a little bit. I will pop some glue, my handy D-up, D-U-P, whatever you want to call it, lash glue. And while I wait for that to dry slightly, I'm going to go ahead and re-curl my lashes. Ooh, these go up really well too. I like this mascara, you guys. Oh, do you see that? That's actually really good. And that's only like one coat. Pop this. These are really quite long on the eye. So I'm gonna drag it out a little bit so it goes to the very edge and off of my eye slightly. These ones are like long. They're not that voluminous, but they're definitely, definitely long. There we go. Hmm. Quite like it. It looks very like, makes a Definitely, definitely makes a big difference on my eye. All right, I think that's pretty much the finished look. I am going to just quickly do my hair so I look like a decent human being and then I'll be right back. 
Alrighty, you guys, here is the completed look. What do you think? I think it turned out okay for not really having a plan and then that plan also changing in the middle of it and it turned out to be a more like warm toned orangey look than the pink brown that I was going for. I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions with all new Japanese makeup products. It was the first time for me trying out all of these products as well, so quite exciting. Please let me know if there's anything in particular you are more curious about. I do hope to include these more in upcoming future videos so please let me know in a comment below and I will see you guys in the next one love you all Mwah. bye